from the Spacebird Media Studios, it's Roxanne and Ace Unlimited. Welcome to Friday. You are listening to Roxanne and Ace Unlimited. We always love to be able to talk about faith, family, friendship, whatever's trending, the vibes of the week, and also a chance for us just to be able to spend time together talking about God is what this show is all about. We're going to get some time a little bit later to tell you about a new movie called Average Joe, so stick around for that. But uh, in the meantime, thanks to my brother's cup and Birmingham Mortgage Group, we're back. Roxanne, how was your Labor Day? Absolutely great. Very laid back. How about you? The same. I did the least amount of laboring that I could possibly do. <laughs> like it was just, it was one of those chill. And normally too, with when you're busy like we are, it's like, well, do, do we want to go to the movies? Do we want to go shopping? Do we want to bring friends over? We want to go. I was like, no, I, I, I want to stay in my jammies as often as I possibly can. <laughs> and I think I did. At least some facsimile of jammies. Maybe not actual jammy pants, but <laughs> I was comfy. Well, maybe in your loungewear, you were on your phone and you were having a conversation with somebody while you were looking at your phone. And then you look back and you see advertising about what you were just talking about. Wayne flip, my husband Wayne flips out when that happens. Yeah. He's like, why am I seeing what I just talked about? They're snooping on me. Well, it's true. Cox Media Group that owns a lot of radio stations. Yeah. Guess what they did with Facebook and had to admit it today. Oh, yes. Mm. They use AI and they are listening through the microphone right now on mm. your phone. You truly have no privacy. And yep. then Facebook sends you an ad. Oh, my, oh, my. If that ain't wrong, I don't know what is. Yeah, and I think we've all been, you know, suspicious of this because clearly, you know, like Wayne experienced, you know, you, you mentioned something and all of a sudden, bam, you know, there's things about roofing and, you know, <laughs> plants or whatever. It's all right there. But I will say I've tried on the other side. I'd be like, I want, and then like whatever, like if we're looking for like someone to do bathroom repairs or whatever, like I need bathroom repair people. And then I want to see if all of a sudden my Facebook page is filling up, which maybe after the show we'll find out because my phone's right here. So we'll see if this is true, but which I don't need. But in the meantime, it would, I mean, th there is no true privacy. And honestly, I don't really care that they can hear everything I'm saying. I'm not saying anything that, you know, would get me in trouble. But again, there are, here's the thing. It's not even so much my words that I know my phone's listening. I try not to even gaze because if your eyes linger too long on a particular picture or ad or whatever, then it picks up on that algorithm because it's an emotional response. And it's like, okay. And then, and it's like, why did I look at a picture of, you know, Dennis Quaid? And then all of a sudden, all these things about Dennis Quaid are coming up on nothing against Dennis Quaid. But the one thing doesn't mean my whole feed of the day needs to focus on that. Well, Wayne came running and said, look at this. It is an AI girlfriend. It's a fake person trying to talk to me. I swear to God, I'm not looking anything bad. I swear to God, I didn't do it. Yeah. I don't know why it's on there, but I want you to see it. And I want you to help me make it go away. And I totally believe him because it's a big thing with us because I've had a past having to deal with that. And sure. I'm not going to be dealing with that anymore. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and so... I felt so bad for him because he was like, I need this. Because the woman is beautiful. She's dressed. Mm -hmm. She's beautiful. And she's wanting to be your girlfriend. And she's talking to you. And she looks real. Yeah. And, and it's sucking men in to pay for this. I don't know. I guess at some point they'd pay for her clothes to come off. I don't know what. But it's a, it's a special kind of evil. Yeah. And I just, I think... I think we're just being, it's the devil. I mean, everything isn't the devil. Somebody will write or call or say, Roxanne, everything in the devil. But I think the enemy enjoys enticing people with this beautiful fake AI woman who's promising mm. to be your buddy when there's a loneliness epidemic. Sure. There has to be some element of evil in that. Yeah. Well, and my pet peeve, because I have a couple of like games on my phone that I like to play just in passing time, like it after dinner or whatever. And 
every game now has some kind of 10 to 20 second ad on it. And I can't tell you the number of times I've been playing a game and like a bra ad will come up or, you know, something with some girl in a bathing suit. And if Tawny's walking by, I'm like, I'm playing my game. What is this? Like I point it out so that she knows because like you guys, like that accountability is there. And not that a bra ad has ever done anything for me anyway. But again, in passing, if my wife's walking by the chair, mm -hmm. I don't want her to think I'm doing something that I'm not supposed to be doing. And they need to stop putting, know your target. Like know that, you know, I don't, I'm not going to buy the bra and I'm not turned on by these strangers <laughs> that I can't have sex with anyway. Like it's a whole thing. Well, and Wayne gets a lot of wig ads. But I'm like, well, honey, you have been known to buy a few wigs. So, you know, you can look at wigs all day. I'm That's okay true. with that. Right. How to know if your desires are from God. You know, a gentleman writes about how when he was growing up, he wanted to be a magician, and then he wanted mm. to be a stuntman, and then he wanted to be a comedian, and then he wanted to be a rock star. And he thought, is this in God's will? And so he gives three points about how we know we're in God's will for the things that, you know, we're dreaming about. It will ultimately bring glory to God. You know, not every job is as fun as you and I get to do, Ace, where we get to talk sure. about Jesus, yep. uh, you know, for a living. We got to do that for a long time. We still do that. You know, not everybody's going to serve in ministry. Not everybody's cut out to serve in ministry, but you can make your vocation your ministry. Yeah. And so I think he has a point. It will ultimately bring glory to God. And he believes whatever it is, it's going to benefit others if it's within God's will. Yeah. Well, and the reality is, too, that no matter what your job is, where you are is your ministry. You know, the relationships that you have, the things and conversations that you cultivate with people allows for your faith to play into their lives and vice versa if they have some. But I also love the fact that if you're pursuing God's will, and he points it out in this blog of that it benefits others. So if you're like, well, I want to be a pastor or I want to be a this. OK, well, first serve him where you are. And then because that's your training ground, because you need to be able to because a lot of times co-workers like I don't like them. Why would I want to, you know, minister to them? <laughs> that's the perfect training ground. You know, yes. you're, you're never in a scenario where you love the people that you you know, they might annoy you to death. But that's what we're <laughs> here for is to love God and love others. So if you serve him where you're at, no matter what your job is, then that's opening up to what he's taking you to. Dealing with your partner's quirks like they have to deal with ours. We all have quirks. Yes. And the experts have a lot to say about how we deal with our partner's quirks. Sometimes it's something minor, but it bu uh, 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 ugs us so much. Yep. And then for a lot of women, it's we stew. So we'll, we'll go, oh, I can't stand that. And then we'll stew. Sorry, I'm making a lot of faces today. I don't yeah, know what's right. up with it. But it's like, we'll stew about the thing. and But you know what? I got, and I've shared this story, so bear with me. I don't think I've said it on the podcast, so bear with me. But this every time is what I think. If there's an irritant, minor or major, you're going to have them when you're with another human being. I always think about this. A wife was so upset that her husband went to the kitchen. He would take out whatever's in the cupboard. He would eat leaning over the counter and crumbs would be everywhere. And he would never, ever wipe it up. And it would drive her absolutely insane. Yeah. But guess what? He died. She walked into the kitchen and she missed the crumbs. Yep. Yeah. Well, and I've said this for a while, but it always bears repeating. The thing that annoys us about people, and it's not even just in our relationships or our marriages, but especially in them, the things about them that annoy you are attached to all the millions of things about them that you love. So if you remove a certain part of negative things or the thing that you harp on or that you want to see go away, well, okay, then it's going to take the millions of other things that are good about them with it because it's the balance of that inside of them. So my wife knows, you know, my 
affinity for cleanliness. She knows that I'm just going to do it, and it's not an insult to her. I'm just going to take care of it and clean it because it needs to be done. So why not just do it? And then I'm at peace. So right. she doesn't, well, you're always cleaning. You know, like she could easily pick that apart, but she also knows that I've got my earbuds in. So really it's an excuse to listen to music. I just happen to be cleaning while I do it. <laughs> but A man will, who cleans, that's I, so good. <laughs> I will say this. We were actually watching, we've been binging uh, Modern Family. And as we've gotten into the latter seasons, there's an episode where they sit with a counselor and she talks about their junk drawer. And it's a metaphor for the junk in your life that you haven't dealt with yet. Like it's in the mm -hmm. back of the drawer that nobody sees but you. And they all start to pick apart the things about each other that are annoying or that, you know, drive them crazy. And at the end of the episode, I looked at my wife, I go, I would never. And she goes, well, first of all, never in a family setting would I do that, let alone pick apart the things about you. If there's something about you that you don't like that might bother me, I know you're going to deal with it before I even mention it. Aww. And inside of that, it's also what makes you part of you. It makes you human because, again, we're not perfect people. We're just two people coming together and embracing the good, the bad, and the ugly. So I would never sit with a counselor and go, well, you know, I wish she would, you know, or she would stop. <laughs> what? I mean, there's so many millions of things to focus on that are wonderful about my wife. That's where I tend to <laughs> give my focus. We you know we share a lot on this show. In couples therapy, first time around, we were given the assignment to bring irritants, to list them and bring them. Yeah. What? And bring them to counseling. This is a true story. His list, 53 things. Wow. My list, two. Wow. Okay, moving on. Usually it's the other way around. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't, and, and I will say this though, if, if there are true things that you haven't dealt with in your relationship, then counseling can be a good thing. I'm not to say that a counselor is going to make you sit and pull every irritant out. No. But focusing on all the beautiful and wonderful things about the person in your relationship that you're married to for life gives you a chance to celebrate that every day and to love them in a safe environment so that when the world is ugly, they know they can fall into your arms and oh. veg, you know, with some charcuterie and wine <laughs> and everything's going to be okay with the little prayer added mm -hmm. on top of that, you know? I love that. That's so, so sweet. All right, now to something really, really serious. The kids are doing. I don't, I must be living under a rock. I didn't know about this, but I do want to pass it along. It's a big thing in Georgia, of all places. Kids are getting high on nutmeg. The kitchen staple. And, they're, and not, they're not eating it. They're snorting it, right? Yes. Yeah. Mm. And it, it does have properties that will give you a little buzzy buzz for about 10 minutes. And then it gives you a horrible, it makes you sick. Mm. So it has been making kids really, really sick. And the teachers literally quoted in this article about it says, I have to watch every day the new things that they do that could be highly dangerous yes. and then of course there's the nutmeg uh tiktok challenge where you're ingesting a lot of this stuff and it's uh. well and i will say this i applaud the fact that certain things that were misused are now like you have to go to the pharmacist and get them to give it to you and show yeah. ID and stuff because kids were, you know, taking too much, you know, NyQuil or whatever it was at the time or sniffing glue or what. I mean, as dumb as it seems, kids are going to be curious, right? And then their friends are like, hey, what if, uh, you know, or did you hear about, you know, again, having the conversations and being aware of what's happening and what's, you know, being challenged to them is huge for parents because we have to be able to say, Hey, by the way, don't do that. <laughs> and here's why. 
you know, Hannah would eye roll because she'd heard it 50 million. You know, every mom says just because everybody else jumps off the cliff doesn't mean you need to. Something right? along those lines. My mom said And that. she would roll her eyes and say, Mom, you've told me this 50 million trillion times. And it's true. I just, because you've got to. Ugh. And for Have kids who are listening, we're going to tell you right now, we ain't your mom and dad, but stop sniffing things that don't go up your nose. Stop doing any of that stuff. It's it, it, it it's not going to get you more follows. It's going to end. You're going to end up in the emergency room. Like, right. Just be smart about it. Uh, I, yeah, I ain't your daddy, but <laughs> sorry, that's that's kind of like a real Debbie Downer there. But I, it's a public service, right? Absolutely. Because I had no idea. Yeah. And I, I think I'm fairly well-read and educated. So, well, there, so there you have it. Someone who does a great public service and helps us to get into our dream homes is Turin Newell at Birmingham Mortgage Group. He is amazing. He knows the programs that will help you get into the house that you don't think you can afford right now. Oh, what a great job he does. He is like the mortgage guru. If there's a way, he's going to find a way. He is such a class person. And if you want to, he loves praying with mm. people. And I have friends that have used him and still call him just to pray. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Uh, a, a man with a great heart. Uh, he can get you into new construction right now. He works both in Alabama and Florida. Birmingham Mortgage Group, his name is unusual it's Turin. i love his name it's mm -hmm. really cool 205-259-1656 bhammortgage.com for more information you will be so glad that you gave him a call so when it comes to our faith how can we experience god through our relationships and i i feel like it's our relationships that really do bring us together because again it's not in the it it's it's in our hurts and our habits that really do bring us closer together. Like so many times we hide those things because no one's going to understand what I'm going through. And really then once they hear someone else, that's what I used to love about being a part of Celebrate Recovery is hearing someone's transparency about something that it's not always just drugs and, you know, alcohol. I mean, there are some deep hurts and things that we need to deal with, but we think we're the only ones that's ever had to deal with them. And that's just simply not true. Well, when we were out doing our street ministry called Special Ops, one of the former pimps, I mean, he just says, I'm the biggest pimp in this area. Former. He got saved. He's got a real job. Thank mm. God. He pointed down the street and he said, see that guy? He's taking my place. He's a young guy. He needs to come down here for prayer. I'm going to go get him. And I was like, there's no way. He's not going to come down. Me, big faith. He's not right. going to come down here. He's down there with about five girls. You're going to walk down there and ask him to come to have prayer. So we started praying, Lord, Lord, angels, come down here. So he walks down, he hesitates. And you know me, Ace, I'm not exactly shy. <laughs> so I'm like, hey, come. <laughs> mm. He hesitates. I did it again. I just want to pray with you. And he hesitates, finally walks across the street, and we got to pray with him. And it was like God parting the seas. Wow. And you would assume someone like that is going to be rough, violent, scary, yeah. when in fact, he showed us all down his arm the names of all of his relatives that are dead, including his mom and dad. I mean, a list tattooed down his arm of everybody he's lost. Mm. So we just spent time ministering to him on who he's lost. Wow. And maybe a seed was planted. I don't know that anything has changed, right. but God is at work. Well, and it's also a great reminder of the people who have prayed for us prior to our existence and the people yes. that we pray for moving forward that haven't even been born yet. Like, your kids, grandkids, great-grandkids, because, again, you want to leave a legacy, but your prayer life is that legacy. It's your kids watching you pray, and then you see them pray, and their friends watching. Like, again, through our relationships is what brings us closer to God, because we not only get to watch Him work in people's lives, like Roxanne talking about, but then 
it's in either sharing that experience right in the flesh or hearing about it. So then it's another reason to celebrate, right? It's the high five of God did what in your life? You know, he <laughs> saved you from where? I mean, those are happening every day and we need to be able to have that open door to know what's happening in people's lives or when they are on the side of defense that they don't need to be. We then know how to pray for them and say, hey, I'm not here to judge you. I'm, I just want to understand where you're at so that I can pray for you properly. Because the Amen. great thing is they can't stop you from praying. They go, don't pray for me. <laughs> you can't make me. <laughs> because I, I get to have my conversations with God about who I want to. And it's the whole mindset of, Lord, thank you for what you're about to do in his life, what you're about to do in her life. I don't know what it is, but thank you for the peace that's coming, the healing that's coming, the bondage that's broken, all of those things, because it's coming. And what's great is then when, and you may never see him again, right? But right. when it, but, but when you get to heaven and something did happen, you just, it, you're just going <laughs> to weep. You'll be like, what? You know, but again, that's our God. Glorious. At Costco in Manhattan, they may have to close because of all of the shoplifting. And they list what's very popular to shoplift. And this blows my, I still don't understand it. A cordless Dyson vacuum cleaner. They've lost $6,210 worth. All right, it's Costco. You have to show the receipt. They look right. at the box. There's someone at the door. Apparently, somebody is sneaking them out of there. Then it's the things they steal, the pack of Gillette men's razors. People are sticking those in their shirts. Mm -hmm. Well, I'll tell you what. What they want for razors, that's another topic for another I'm making right. a joke, and it's not funny. But <laughs> theft is out of control, and people steal vitamins. Stick them in. To me, going to jail over a vitamin just yeah. ain't worth it. Well, but also, too, Costco's known for being in bulk. So how are you yeah. carrying out bulky? Like, it's one thing to steal it from, like, a, you know, a place where it's just a single, you know, bottle. Oh. But you got 20 bottles for 10 bucks, you know. How are you? No, this is just my radio. You know I mean? <laughs> Multi-packs of the premium paper towels. It's like, it's just. Us. Did the person at the door go to the bathroom and you're right. running as fast as you can? I don't see how that's happening, but. I don't either. It's you it's know, crazy to do in bulk. Do what you can. Well, and before, of course, uh, we jet, we do also want to remind you, don't forget to get your Roxanne blend of coffee, because <gasps> the great Yay! part is as you are trying to chill, as it gets into the fall, this is the perfect fall blend of flavors. And it's all got Roxanne's name on it, all for the glory of God. It's a woman-owned company now, Kate Pittman. Hi, Kay. She watches the podcast every week. It's amazing, this company out of Mississippi that has just blown up. The quality of this coffee is amazing. I'm parcel to the Roxanne blend because it has my name on the bag and pretty butterflies because, well, her husband, Mike, knew that I loved butterflies. Mm -hmm. And it sends missionaries around the world. Mybrotherscup.com. Click on the Roxanne Blend. Treat yourself or somebody else. It's a great gift knowing that it promotes the kingdom of God. As we close, Kevin Costner, uh, making movies, 69 years old. Just a really, uh, we haven't really talked about Kevin Costner before, but I like his understated acting. Mm. It's like he's not acting yeah. to me. Well, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, there are certain, like, everything after Bull Durham, I kind of feel like is he's just playing the same character, but one might have a cowboy hat, and then the next one he might wear a fedora, and the next one he's, you know, got tattoos, or I don't know. But in that, Kevin Costner knows that he has a fan base, and anything he does is from his own gut check, and his fans are going to love it because they know that he's not just going to... Like, he's not joining the Marvel Universe, nothing against that, but that's not his wheelhouse, right? But here's the thing that's funny. He knows he makes movies for men, but it's almost like the days of when Marlboro cigarettes, like they had the, you know, the Marlboro Man. It was the number one cigarette, may even still be, number one cigarette among women. Because if they smoke the Marble Reds, they get the rugged man, right? So <laughs> if, 
if he just makes a rugged movie, he knows the rugged men come and the women coming too because, you know, he's he's a good-looking dude, right? So. Well, he says a lot of women bring their men to the movies that he does make for men, but he says he always makes sure that there's a strong woman character and he loves Westerns. Obviously his latest film out is a Western, but he says women were the backbone, man. It was tough to be dragged out West and have to live that life. Right. And uh, they made it happen. So he's got great respect for women. I think he's going to be, you know, kind of like, I don't know, Clint Eastwood, and just keep sure. going and going and going and making movies when you're 90 and just loving life. We're Roxanne and Ace Unlimited. Thank you so much for joining us today. I have been excited, Ace can tell you, for weeks and weeks mm -hmm. to get to talk to this extraordinary young woman who is changing the world. She is a screenwriter, a ghostwriter, a PhD, a poet, a script analyst, and mega christian super fun girl very very smart obviously and has put together a new movie she's the writer of average joe and my theater has a big poster up with average joe i'm like yes i know the writer thank you very much hmm. what? so it's very exciting we welcome stephanie katz thank you all so much for having me and you need to send me a picture of that that yes, no, I do. I I'm like that yet. <laughs> yeah, that is so cool. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I guess that's a especially when it comes to a faith based film because a lot of times they don't get picked up by every theater, they're only in like so many. Talk a little bit about that because I feel like that's a big part of what we could be praying for Hollywood is that not only movies like this get made as of true stories of faith in action. But then how we can see that, you know, going into the theaters to be on more screens. Uh, so demand is really what drives it. And thankfully, people have been very interested in this case and followed it with Coach. I mean, this started, I think, back in like 2013, 14. And I came on board um, right before the first Supreme Court uh, decision kicked it back down to the lower courts. So we had to hit pause for a number of years until there was a decision, but people remained interested in the case, even throughout the entire process. And so when um, the, the time came to do this movie, uh, people were just really excited. And we've got, because of our previous film, The Blind, which came out last year and did really well, we had some traction with our distributors, Fathom Events. And so they're pushing a major nationwide release for this, which we're very grateful and very excited <laughs> about. Well, the movie is based on the football coach, Joseph Kennedy. I know a lot of you recall, he was kneeling after games and praying and he got fired. And he and his wife were just like, you know what? We can't have this. We have to take a stand. What was it like, Stephanie, getting to know him and really getting into the meat as a writer of this story? He is the biggest character. I have loved getting to know <laughs> Joe and Denise so much um, over the last, like, almost eight years now. And he, he really is just an average Joe. Like, he... <laughs> is so humble and just kind of approaches life with like a mischievous boyish curiosity but with a lion heart that is just has a strong sense of um of just what he believes in moral conviction and so um, you know, what drew me to this story was that he was not just doing this for his own faith, but for people of all faiths. And so he just ha asked the question, you know, as a Marine Corps veteran, a combat veteran in the first Desert Storm, um, he was like, you know, I fought and for the freedoms, for the the constitutional freedoms that are guaranteed to every American. And when it came down to his football coaching career years later, and the fact that praying, which is one of our First Amendment protections, is freedom of religious expression, um, it was about to threaten his job security. He asked, well, why aren't the same freedoms that I fought and defended 
applying to me as an American citizen. And that was his motivation was just kind of to find an answer to that question. And um, and he fought a very long and <laughs> trying battle as the movie goes into that. But it also goes into like the history and the love story between him and his wife um, and kind of the star-crossed lovers that you know, they were each other's soulmates from nine years old. It just took them a long time to finally get together. Uh, <laughs> So it's a it's a really just American underdog feel good story. And yeah, that's what drew me to it. Well, and I love that this is kind of the way that a lot of Christian films have been in the last several years of taking real life God ordained moments and going spotlight and then telling the story behind those people, because then people just go to the movie because they think it's about a football coach or it's because, you know, it's about, you know, something, whatever. And then they find the, a piece of themselves in the characters that are experiencing a daily relationship with God. And so that's what I'm hoping is setting the tone. Do you feel like Hollywood is finally recognizing that there's an audience for these kinds of stories? I think they are definitely, yeah, there's there's a, uh, a bigger demand that's growing um, and people want more inspirational material because you know the world is very dark and scary and um kind of a tenuous place to be in right now and so yeah i think people are searching for positive uplifting messages that can give them hope and give them inspiration and some kind of um you know pointing them to god and pointing them to um you know something that just connects at a very spiritual and emotional level. Well, you must be pretty excited about the the all-star lineup for this. Uh, Harold Cronk, who directed God's Not Dead, he's Emmy Award winning. He directed this film. Then you've got Eric Close of Nashville. If you watch American Sniper, you'll recognize him. Suits, there's a lot of people are watching Suits and they love it. He stars. And then Amy Acker of Ordinary Angels, and I loved Ordinary Angels. I, I was the woman bawling sideways at Ordinary Angels. So are you thrilled about how it turned out? Oh, I am <laughs> absolutely thrilled. And the, the funny thing is, and I'm a little embarrassed to admit it, was that I didn't really know who either of them were at the time because I, I just what? never got into, I was in school when Suits was, like I was in college when Suits was big and like Nashville and all those. And so um, it was really through friends of mine when they were like, oh, who'd you cast? And I revealed the cast. They're like, oh my gosh, do you know who this is? I was like, <laughs> no, but, and and I, but I was just, they are the nicest people. Um, they were just so wonderful to work with. And um, they just beautifully encapsulated Joe and Denise and um, the complexities of their story. And yeah, so it's, it was really cool to then do some research and be like, oh, wow, like these are <laughs> these are like heavy hitters. And then we also have just a number of other people, talented people who who um, who were from L.A. and from New Orleans because we, we filmed outside of New Orleans. Um, and we just were incredibly blessed with an, an, um, an amazing team front and behind camera. So great. Well, so, oh, go ahead. So, Stephanie, what are you hoping people take away from this movie? Ooh, um, I really like what drew me to the story was how one person could make a difference and how it was kind of like the least likely person that God picked for this journey. I mean, somebody who um, is like self-proclaimed, he goes, I'm not a Bible scholar. I'm not like I was a hellion of a kid um, who nobody wanted just kind of found a way out of a really bad childhood through military service and was just trying to live a decent life and with the love of his life and um, ended up changing history in a way. And um, I think it's 
one of the things that is so great about our country is that anybody can make a difference. And these freedoms, especially in the First Amendment, which I think so many people don't even realize today what those freedoms are, what they mean, um, and how they're being called into question constantly. And that it does take, you know, ordinary people to stand up and for what they believe in on either side of the political spectrum. It's it's a movie that applies to all Americans um, and just is a real kind of underdog story of how one person can make a difference. When do we get to see it? It is in theaters October 11th and tickets are available on pre for pre-sale um, through I think Fathom and uh, any of the major theater chains. So yes, we are super excited. Excellent. Well, we'll post the trailer on our website, RoxanneandAce.com, so we can get people jazzed and talking about it. Uh, but Stephanie Katz has been our guest. The movie is called Average Joe. Thank you so much. Thank you all. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Always great to wind down, catching up on our vibes of the week. Roxanne, what's cooking? See, I'm crazy. You know, I had to watch Tiger King yeah. and got obsessed. And Tawny, I know, watched it too. Mm -hmm. Well, this is another thing going into a person and people obsessed with being around, raising, owning, breeding chimpanzees it's on hbo it's a documentary and i was all prepared not to like tanya Haddix, and it didn't happen mm. yes she appears to be off yes she did say she loves her chimp more than her own child yes she did lie to Peta and hide and do things right but i just can't dislike her i just can't and i just can't she fought foster mothered 37 kids and adopted a special needs child. She's a yeah. caregiver. She loves them. Who am I? But it's fascinating to look at how you have a chimp in your own house right. and how that works. Can't even imagine that. <laughs> Closest I've known was Michael Jackson, and I'm not close to him at all. So that's how little I know about that. <laughs> so my vibe this week is actually a prop that's going to completely geek a lot of my other fans, f friends out because I managed to snag one of these. It was the hot item last week, but my obsession with Batman and AMC released a popcorn bucket that actually holds popcorn, right? Yeah. And it opens up very cleverly, but it also, wow. it also lights up. I don't know uh -uh. if you can tell. You it can't really... lights up. Yes. So, of course, I came into the basement, you know, waited for it to be dark and then shined it on the, the biggest wall we have. And I was like, this is the coolest thing I own. <laughs> and my my wife saw me post about it on TikTok. She goes, step away from the Timu. Step away quickly. But it was an AMC <laughs> exclusive. So I got that and the commemorative cup. So I'm living my happy Batman fan self. Man, that's awesome. I haven't eaten popcorn in it. Like, it's it's a total decorative, you know. Are you going to eat popcorn out of no. it? No. No. I've always wanted a bad signal light. Now I have one. I don't want to get it messed up with salt it's and for popcorn. butter. <laughs> Maybe one time. We'll see how that goes. Thanks for hanging out. Hopefully you got something out of this week's show. If you like it, subscribe, follow, and share with your friends. Thanks to My Brother's Cup and Birmingham Mortgage Group and Stephanie Katz. Make sure you check out Average Joe October 11th, and we'll look forward to seeing you next week with a special edition of Roxanne and Ace Unlimited. And so just stay tuned. It's very, very special. Uh, but looking forward to it. So, Roxanne, have a great weekend. I love you. You too. I love you. You've been listening to Roxanne and Ace Unlimited. To make sure you don't miss future shows, you can subscribe anywhere you like to podcast and catch up on anything you've missed. Find out more at RoxanneandAce.com. Roxanne and Ace Unlimited is a production of Spacebird Media.